there is nothing inside. Okay? <laughs> It was reported in a tiny bit of the paper that about a month ago, David Cameron went for the weekend with the Rothermeres, Lord and Lady Rothermere. Why are they important? So they run a big chunk of the press, the Daily Mail, the Sunday Mail, the Evening Standard, and he went and had a nice little weekend with them. So watch David Cameron, because he's being pushed forward, but he is a doll. When we produced the paper, we didn't know what was going to happen. People started to ring and people started to tell us things. And we got told all sorts of things about fraud and corruption and bullying and missing money. But the one thing that horrified us was the stories about the children. And these didn't come in in odd ones or twos. They came in in groups, seven, eight, nine. Mothers who'd never met each other who were in different parts of the country, who might even be in ERA or Scotland or Wales, and they told the same story of having a normal life and then all of a sudden things happen. And then their children are taken away. And in the course of taking their children away, social services, local authorities, the police, the courts lie, falsify evidence, commit perjury in court, threaten people, deny access to proper paperwork. And if the mother, in particular, fights to keep her children against all of that false evidence, they then work to section her. And many of these mothers are being sectioned, or they try another trick, which is that if you want access to your children, you need to go on Prozac. You need to have a psychiatric assessment. But if you do the assessment, we'll let you see your child. So they have the assessment, and then all of a sudden, they've got mental health problems. Now, this is not East Germany. It's not the Soviet Union. This is Britain under Jack Straw and Jackie Smith. And I'd better bring in the Lib Dems, because if you think the Lib Dems are any better, they are absolutely not. So we are in a very, very serious situation because we are very close to a one-party state. All the laughter's gone. I'm really sorry. Can, pig, <laughs> can pigs fly? You're allowed to talk to me because I'm quite friendly. <laughs> can, pig, can pigs fly? <laughs> well, you've got it. If pigs can't fly, swine flu can't be real, can it? <laughs> SARS, se Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Do you remember it? Millions were going to die of it. My wife, who's got a bit of medical training, said, isn't it interesting that in medical terminology, severe and acute is the same. It means the same thing. So why would you have severe acute respiratory syndrome? It's easy because if you drop severe, it's arse. <laughs> right? So we were, t we were talking language. That was a long A. I'm not sure whether the Americans would have understood that. But it's nonsense, okay? But this, the child stealing, is not nonsense. I'll come on to that. I'm, I'm going to take some questions at the end, okay, so I will give you the opportunity for some questions. You can help me. What time did I start? Quarter past, Quarter past nine. I've got to get a move on then. Right. Have we got a problem in this country? We have. We've definitely got a problem. And we've got to deal with it. We've got to confront evil. We're not allowed to learn and then say, oh, that's a bit scary. I'm not going to go there. Because you are the people who are going to do something about it. We are the people who are going to do something about it. Okay? You're allowed to be scared, because that's normal, but you have to get through it. The troops that go out to Afghanistan will be scared at some point, but they have to do the job. And you're here sat in a very warm, comfortable room. So you're allowed to be a bit scared. It is a bit scary, but we'll get through it. Now, I've got to check you out. What do you know? Do bad people exist? All right, that's okay. 
So, who's this guy? Yeah, this is a young, uh, a young Stalin, 1902, I think. And that's him when he grew up, and he murdered millions of people. Does anybody have a problem with that? I mean, the statistics. Sometimes I get communists in the, or Marxists in the audience, and they tell me that, really, it was quite a nice regime. Okay. Um, what about this guy? He's appearing in the papers a lot, isn't he? Un Uncle Hitler, and they're now making little shows of him. Keep going. Pol Pot, yeah. Pinochet, he killed a few. Great friend of Margaret Thatcher's, of course, so he can't be all bad. Idi Amin, were you getting the idea? Bad people exist. They've existed in the past, they exist now. Just because you have nice, comfortable lives and your friends are nice people doesn't mean they're not bad people out there. I was trained, so from the day I joined the Navy, very quickly I'm being told about bad people and how they're going to kill me. They're going to blow me up, they're going to gas me, they're going to do me with biological weapons. We had to go through that. You need to go through it a little bit because then we can fight. How many people did this man murder? Okay, I'll, I'll accept whatever you say. 250 million. Well, we've got a lot of millions on the screen. So who's next? Who's the next man? Oh, well done, sir. I like you. <laughs> there he is. Just because he's British and in a suit and smiling does not mean to say this man is not of the same caliber as all the rest. He sent people into wars that were illegal wars. He is a liar. He's a traitor to the country. And he's part of a clique that's in Parliament. And we know they're not trustworthy, don't we? How do we know that? They steal money. But, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah? Yeah? I think the MPs were set up. I think they were duped. And I think we've got to be kind to them up to a point. Not all of them, because some of them are like this man. But I believe MPs were duped, and I'll come back to that. Here's where we are. We're in a bad place. We've got a government by an elite. Has anybody got any doubt that they're an elite? There was a headline, I think it was the Independent, which had brown... Um, Cameron and Clegg and Brown said what we've got to do is make sure the political elite are accountable what we've got to do is make sure there isn't a political elite we are there serving the state aren't we it doesn't matter whether it's a, fight, a, a parking ticket or something the state is imposing on us and there's no such thing as a fair trial I do not believe any more our courts are fair, and if you understood what they're doing with the children, you would know that's the case. A little while ago, brilliant, I was contacted for the first time, I will say by a man in the legal profession, and he asked if I'd meet him, which I did. And he said, I am witnessing judges making unlawful decisions in courts. On one occasion, I challenged the man, and he said to me, if you continue down this route, I will put you in prison. So I have somebody very interesting telling me that there is no justice. And this is the elite. This is the lib lab con. This is the one-party state. These men are unbelievably dangerous. And if you don't know anything about the background of Cameron, you need to find out. And you need to find out about the Astor family that he's connected with and their history. And have a look at Mr. Clegg and see what he really believes in. These men are working together and they are going to betray us. Propaganda. If we didn't have good old Edge Media and Ian Crane, because he's done a great job with this as well, but the media is now being controlled the local newspapers are bought, being bought up, and a lot of them are then being put out of business. The media industry is being regionalized, marginalized, regionalized, because we are preparing for the EU police state. And that's what it's going to be like. Well, it's